Every day, 43 children are diagnosed with cancer. More than 40,000 children undergo treatment for cancer each year. Childhood cancer occurs regularly, randomly, and spares no ethnic group. Yet, childhood cancer is consistently underfunded each year. Let's make a difference, even if for just one child. I, I knew that she had had a follow-up appointment with our pediatrician. Um, I, it was actually me who called her because I had my phone off. And right away, um, you know, I could hear her on the other line crying. And while I guess deep down I had hoped to be optimistic um, and that things would be okay, I, I, was, I was stunned when she put two words together that I don't think I'd ever put in the same context. She put the word, we're going to be admitted to the pediatric oncology floor. And I remember just holding the phone up with a number of my coworkers around and just trying to process the two words. I know what the definition of both words are independently, um, but putting them together and um, having them relate to you know my only son was quite the shock to me. Um, TSA and, and the folks at Delta rushed me through, um, got me to the front of the line. I had about 10 minutes before the gate was going to close. And I realized I had not had the ability to actually go online. I remember I sat on my plane, I was sweating through my clothes, I had dinner in my hand. So I grabbed my phone and I remember um, doing a Google search for what are the chances, what, what are re recovery odds for a child with leukemia. My son has cancer and you just, again, I think it's your mom instinct again, just going, I'm gonna bury my child. I didn't ever think this would happen to me and it's happening and what am I gonna do? I asked him why, why did this happen? How did this happen? There's no history of blood cancers on either side of our family. I, how did we get sucker punched like this? And he just says, we don't even really know that answer. It just was a malfunction somehow in Andrew's assembly line of being able to make um, T cells that malfunctioned. And But we know how to fix it and we're gonna fix it and you're gonna be fine. Here is this young, beautiful child. I mean, just a beautiful young boy and a very nervous, anxious family who I now have to tell that he has leukemia. And if you don't do this every day, you don't know that there's hope at the end. And so hearing that diagnosis is pretty severe for a family. Uh, it, it's a difficult struggle. And some do it better than others, but they all do it better than you could have even imagined. So that's where all of the hope and the optimism comes from. Because we have an opportunity to offer them treatment and therapy that will actually cure the disease, or at least make it better. Yeah, there, there were some days where, you know, you get a little down and you're like, man, this sucks, kind of. Um, but, you know, most days, um, like being that young, I, I would just think to myself, well, this is, you know, normal for me. Um, and most of the time I just didn't give it a second thought. You know, I'm just out here doing, you know, my everyday thing. But when people come up and tell me, hey, Noah, you're an inspiration to me, that actually gives me motivation you know, to, to be the best I can. And, you know, as far as, uh, you know, talking to a kid who was in the same shoes as I was um, 14 years ago, um, I'd tell them, hey, if I can do it, you can do it.
We were able to get support from CCF at a time when we weren't getting money from anywhere else to basically try out these different ideas and explore um, a totally new space in biology that was really, really novel at the time. And that led to the first drug to directly target EWS fly in Ewing sarcoma. And if it wasn't for those five years or so of CCF support, we absolutely never would have got there, not to mention all of the other downstream support to the research that we did that came as a result of that. So both from the standpoint of getting to a clinical trial, which we are now, and from the standpoint of spawning a lot of other interesting research to ask questions about even other ways of targeting Ewing sarcoma would have never happened without that seed money from CCF over those five years. I remember being quite uh, shocked in a way at how almost barbaric, <laughs> I realized very quickly how barbaric this treatment protocol was gonna be. The research is being done, but there needs to be a lot more of it because there need to be more options out there than just pummeling these kids month after month, week after week. They get so sick on these treatments. There's got to be some other ways that's just easier to fight this cancer than, like I said, trying to almost halfway killing them to cure them. The Next Gen Grant through Giant and through the CCF has really afforded this protocol to move forward as a clinical trial. Um, it is a bispecific dual targeted car and not many places are doing this and so we're able to bring in patients from all over the world that more research needs to be done. Research drives discoveries which drives cures and with local participants like the Children's Cancer Foundation, Giant Food, we are able to do the work that we do. Having CCF be part of this community is so rich and such a strong asset for researchers in the you know, DC, Maryland and Virginia area. We have a unique opportunity to actually filter through and collaborate with people in your neighborhood and try and come up with greater ideas to sort of propel the field forward. So Savile Foods has been involved with the Children's Cancer Foundation since around 1993 and I joined the board in 1995 and uh, one thing I learned is that uh, Shirley Howard and the people that are involved on the board and, and, the, and the doctors that are the recipients of some of the monies from Children's Cancer Foundation are all so passionate, almost to the point of eccentricity as far as uh, their passion for, for uh, curing children's cancer and treating cancer patients and also making their lives better as they go through what they're going through. Getting the word out more on a local basis, um, our customers, our families, are the CCF audience, really, in terms of getting families the help that they need through CCF. Well, it's just been a big change for us all, and I love, like, I've met so many, like, people who have cancer, and they're so brave, and, like, it's good that the doctors help them to survive, beat this battle, and that's just really special to me. I think it's drawn us closer as a family, and I think that we realize stuff about each other that um, other families might not. And I think we have a better appreciation for life and um, being with each other. I am Andrew Devon Oberly. My age is seven and a half. After um, all that treatment, I finally feel better and more active. I want him to skin his leg and trip and fall without worrying about breaking it. Um, I want him to be able to go into a, a hospital and visit someone else and not think it's his hospital visit. <laughs> my wish for my son would be to have a long, healthy, happy, and full life. He loves baseball. I'd love for him to have something fun in his life with baseball and just to be happy and healthy and find someone to love. I want to be um, a doctor for sick kids, like a baby doctor. <laughs>